let me make this public announcement. The Super Bowl is coming to Atlanta, Georgia. One more time. The Super Bowl is coming to Atlanta, Georgia. My next guest is the Director of Communications for the National Football League. That's the NFL Players Association. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation, a very good friend of mine, Carl Francis. So how you doing, buddy? Good to hear from you, man. Hey, man, Good that's something. This is Family Feud days. Oh man, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. I can't do no but smile thinking about them days, man. And uh, man, you 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 were fun to work with, bro. I tell you, it was a great time. Well, you know, the, the beauty of that relationship was that, and that's why, I, you know, because really, because I want to really break down what you do, but it's about imagery and it's about the players and how they are how they're portrayed in the media, also social media, also how they portray themselves. And that was one of the reasons why we got together with Family Feud was just to show a lighter side, a friendly side of the players with Steve Harvey on a very popular show called Family Feud. And they were fantastic, man. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, we we had a great time. And, you know, one of the um, uh, misconceptions about players is, you know, people really don't know the personalities of players because right. the game is such a such a physical game but also number one they got pads uniforms yeah. helmets and things <laughs> and, I, and I remember you know one of the things we tried to do was show those guys like you said in a different light and and I remember after the show you pulling those guys to the side mm-hmm. and talking to them about mm-hmm. the importance of branding and mm-hmm. imagery and mm-hmm. and w- wearing a suit and, and it's being you know, okay yeah. to, 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 to express who you are as a person and man mm-hmm. and they, they sure did and they had a great time and all the guys Came dressed to impress, and uh, I know, it was a good time. I know, they were dressed to impress, my man. And, you know, of course, Antonio <laughs> Brown. You know, he was Antonio Brown. You know, oh, that's show. right, that's Remember right. Was yeah. Antonio Brown, and uh, <laughs> you no, know, my man who went from Arizona to Jacksonville. Uh, Calais, yep. uh, Calais Campbell, Calais yep, Campbell all was on guys. all the fun guys, man, and I think that is what is so important about uh, Antonio Gates was on that show. Uh, yep. Matt Forte was on that show. Just a great group of guys. Uh, Ware, who retired with uh, from Dallas, DeMarcus, who retired, that's right. Demarcus mm-hmm. Ware, and now is on NFL Network. And and when, when I when I walked away from that show, I was just so first of all, you know, the brand of the NFL is the most powerful on TV. Let's get that out the way first. Yes, it is. It's yes, the most it powerful and also the most criticized. Because you know? yeah, yeah, when yeah. you're the best, people going to point your finger, point a finger at you all the time. That's right. And all now, the time. Before I get into the, the your position, I want to talk about your life, you know, from the standpoint. Here's some information about Carl Francis. 24 years of experience in marketing sales. This is how you get to be the director of communications for the NFL. <laughs> 24 years of experience in marketing sales, branding, Website development, digital social media growth, video production, communications, public relations. This is very important. Crisis communication. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Community outreach and event marketing. Yes, sir. That's a resume, my man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and I know that when you in that position, you really do have to have an awareness you might not be an expert but you have to have a strong awareness of what's going on in all these different departments because everybody has an opinion oh absolutely and you know i take pride in what i do because i really care about our 2000 members and future members that are coming up and Mm -hmm. one of the things that's important my job is is to protect the the image of the nfl pa externally and internally but more important uh our players they, they they are a union. They yes, they represent our union. So when they're out there, and and they're going through their transition of figuring out their space of like you mentioned earlier, branding, um, their perception, their role. You know, I I I I have to you know make sure I keep my finger on the pulse of making sure that they understand the importance of it because we're only as good as our players are while they're in the league and then once they finish. See, the most important thing you don't you don't judge a player while he's in the league. I think you really judge a player how good he is once he leaves the league 10 years after he's finished the league. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's when you really figure out whether this guy really got it or not because the athletic part, that's that's 10% of the game. Mm-hmm. 90, 90% of the game is what type of man 
uh, did he become? Mm-hmm. Did he take advantage of academic programs, resources, initiatives in the, in the, in the NFL? And what did he become after the league? Mm-hmm. And, and, and those who are struggling, you know, we still reach back. Mm-hmm. But that's how you really judge a player. You don't judge a player on how many touchdowns, how many catches. You, you depend what, what type of husband did he become? What type of man did he become? Did he work in his community? Did he build a foundation for him and his family uh, beyond football? And that's mm-hmm. how, that's what we try to focus on, helping every player to come to our league get to that point it's a struggle because we're, we're, we're fighting a lot of outside uh, sometimes challenges and distractions but that's our main goal and uh, uh, hopefully you know we're, 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 we're working hard to get there one day at a time now with that being said you gave us a little bit of what the uh, the Players Association does Explain, mm-hmm. give us a full umbrella of what uh, the, the role of the players you said it's a union uh, uh, what else does it does it uh, the the pr- current players and the retired players? What role does it play in their lives? Well, it plays a major role. As a current player, we are the exclusive collective bargaining agent for active players, yes, meaning anything dealing with the players' legal rights on the field and as an NFL player, we represent. So it's important for us to be connected to players when it comes to their contract, uh, their their working conditions, and, and their welfare. Mm-hmm. So when you see players have contract disputes or uh, there's the initiative is built around the health care of players, whether we feel as though a team went through the proper uh, protocol channels on the sideline when a guy uh, gets a concussion. Like Russell Westbrook. Also, I mean, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was an issue. Yeah, Russell Wilson was an issue. Or whether the field. People don't understand. You know, there's a lot of things that play a part of a player's condition. That's, that's the actual field. Mm-hmm. Everyone don't maintain the level of quality for the field of play. Surfaces, making sure that they're kept up, making sure that they're drained, making sure that they had proper standards for safety to make sure that the field the guys are playing on are safe. I mean, these are all elements of our game that most people overlook because they want to see the shiny helmets and the, and the, and the funny-looking cliques and, and all those things <laughs> and, and, and see the touchdowns. But we're, we're talking about the total package And now, the, the, and now the celebrations now, the celebrations. Right, right. And celebration, <laughs> making sure the guys have a little fun once they enjoy themselves, you know, because it is hard getting in that end zone. We, we know it's, it's not easy, you know, it's almost like getting two points in basketball. They're not just letting letting you go to go to the lane. Mm-hmm. You you really working in football too. They're not just letting you score. Mm-hmm. So we understand when you score. And plus, you know, it, it's a marketing disadvantage because players, you know, they have a brand. They want to express themselves, and they want to show that they're real people. And sometimes it's hard to get that connection with the fans because you have a helmet on all the time. So, you know, those type of things we we try to protect and make sure that uh, players receive. And for the former players, we have a program called the trust it's mm-hmm. a program that's dedicated to anybody that played in the league two or more years wow where uh, they give a full body scan uh, head to toe uh, you go through exos uh, it's called an exos program where they send you off to a site in one of four facilities across the country and you can go through a week-long process of working out teaching how to eat, teaching how to take care of yourself. They actually pay for you to go back to school up to $25,000 reimbursement per year going back to school to get your education. That's a real school. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's so many things that we do, but the problem is, you know, any a lot of our players, man, they, they, they go through so much and there's so much pride that a lot of them still trying to figure out who they are and what mm-hmm. they want to become because so much of who they are was What's on that field. Th- What's on, What's that, on field? that field? Mm-hmm. And we and we try to tell them that What's on that field really wasn't you. <laughs> you know, that's just what you did because you were blessed with those abilities. But who you are is an individual that's smart, intelligent. You're a thinker. Uh, you 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 got to have a lot of skill sets that you may not even touched on that that we try to pull out of you so you can you know have a productive life the next you know 30 or 40 years of your life so that's our focus before we end this break i got to bring up this young man linebacker Mm -hmm. university of central florida Mm -hmm. that has been dallas that been dazzling twitter been dazzling dazzling everybody in the sports world Mm -hmm. to quim to quim griffin Mm -hmm. 4.38 in the 40 22 reps at 225 pounds yeah a person like that is who you grab on to. That's right. That's right. 
quality kid. You know, I have not honestly had a chance to meet meet the young man, but his story is what inspires. His story is what our game is all about, and these stories are are, are those that that inspire others to believe that you can. Right. And that's and that's how our league is made up. And our league is made up of a, a lot of young men who have overcame a lot of tragedy, a lot of disappointment in their life, and have become quality young men. And, and, and this young man, I see falling no short of that, and based on a disability. But it doesn't have anything to do with his character, his heart, and his desire. And that should be a message to all young men uh, and, 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 and women. women. For and, that, women. and women mm-hmm. uh, for that part in terms of you can overcome any setback in your life if your mind and your heart are connected and your desire. And I think this young man will have a fantastic Woo, career. In come on now. Uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap up this conversation in our next break. We're going to talk about these uh, the protests. We're going to talk about the concussions. We're going to talk about a lot of great things that's happening in the NFL with Carl Francis. We'll be right back with more from Rashawn McDonald and Money Making Conversations. Don't touch that dog. Let me tell you about the host of Money Making Conversations, Rashawn McDonald. He's a social media influencer. 80% of his 700,000 plus social media followers are female. He's a two-time Emmy Award winner, three-time NAACP Image Award winner, sitcom writer, stand-up comic, former IBM executive, and has a degree in mathematics. More importantly, Rashawn McDonald will use his business and celebrity relationships to empower small businesses with information to succeed. Hey, this is Tasha Evans, and I love to eat at great restaurants. And more than that, I love great desserts. So does Rashawn McDonald. Check out his new website. That's www.rashawnmcdonald.com. That's R-U-S-H-I-O-N, and McDonald is spelled just like the famous restaurant chain. Guys, Rashawn is looking for great bakers for his baker spotlight. He wants to brag on his fans for their incredible baking skills on his social media and website. That can be your mom, friend, coworker, or relative. Spread the word today. Visit RashawnMcDonald.com. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald, the host of Money Making Conversation. You say to yourself, who calls Rashawn's show? Ricky Smiley! You got to get out of your own city and leave in order to grow because a fish don't get bigger as long as it's inside of that fish bowl. Yes, sir. A fish get bigger when you put it in a pond. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the phone the one and only Charlie Wilson! So many people have been, really been trying to get me to do a gospel record for right. so many years, right. and I have been promising God that I would... <laughs> that I would shout him out and do something. Right. <laughs> but I said, you know, and um, burn so, rubble. Uh, there goes uh, my baby. Come on, man. Put a little Jesus in them song. Come on, brother. Miss Patty Labelle. And you know what I'm going to be doing? Concerts and little clubs. With the Thank you. With the, Thank with you. The trio. Woo! So that I can touch you when I'm singing with my hands. Thank you. See, I told you. Be there every Monday, 10 a.m. to noon. Be is 1190. Money making conversation. Cool. Uh, this is Rashawn McDonald. I am hosting Money Making Conversations. On the phone is uh, the Director of Communications for National Football League. That's the NFL, as we all know it, Players Association. Carl Francis. Carl, you still there? Yes, sir. I am. Okay, Carl. Crisis management. That's what it was part of your resume. Crisis <laughs> communication planning. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, the last two years mm-hmm. that you've been dealing with it. Mm-hmm. Of, of the voice of the players trying to get their message out. Can you tell my listeners exactly what is the message that that, that the players are trying to get out about the the national anthem protest? Can you tell us that? I mean, basically, well, let me say this for starters. I think Colin Kaepernick, uh, his his protest was something that he felt sincere and and, and he had a lot of uh, passion about. And so, uh, you know, you commend him for his personal conviction mm-hmm. on what he believed in. Um, but as it relates to a number of players just feeling uh, the same sort of, uh, having the same sort of mindset towards, you know, how our society has changed a little and to, yes, bring, some, to bring some recognition, to bring some a more awareness, awareness. to these awareness. issues. Mm-hmm going to, not recognition, but awareness Mm -hmm. uh, to these issues Mm -hmm. to bring some light and really to open up a discussion. I think discussion has been important. Like Malcolm Jenkins, Tory Smith, Chris Long, Philadelphia Mm -hmm. that that whole team Mm -hmm. coming together Mm -hmm. and sitting down uh, with us in the National Football League Mm -hmm. to say, hey, look, how can we all uh, 
bring conversation and more light to these negative issues in our communities because we are products. Our members are products of many of those communities where a lot of negativity has taken place, and and we want to help. We want to help change, and I think that's been uh, the calling card for a lot of our members. And, and, you know, the good thing about this process is that I think it has really uh, woke up a lot of people in terms of understanding that our players are humans, okay? They are part of these communities. They are part of society. Okay, they pay their their taxes. They they pick up their children from school. They go to the same grocery stores. Mm-hmm. So they're no different than the average person that's mm-hmm. walking other than their job. Mm-hmm. But you can't exclude them from the conversation of having an opinion on their community. That's the right. Um, and they feel like that. Their their mothers still live in those communities. Their family members, their cousins, uh, they're 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 people that's connected to their lives are still a part of these communities. Right. And they and they feel as though I'm a part of it too, so I have just as much of an opinion as anybody else. And I think uh Malcolm Jenkins is and, and his team, the players coalition and those group of players really stood up and, and did a great thing by really bringing all the groups together and having this strong conversation. And I think Colin Kaepernick uh, bringing uh, light to it to open it up for discussion mm-hmm. uh, brought a lot of conversation and good, healthy conversation towards these issues. And uh, it looks like everybody is listening right now. Which is awesome. And I and I commend it because it's a very uh, emotional battle because as mm-hmm. a fan, all you want to do is watch football. That's right. And all you want to do is, you know, cheer. And you right. hear the word team, and, and it kind of throws you off mentally as to because uh, now you have to think about something other than football. And that's right. why I think where the frustration comes with a fan is that, right. you know, football is an escape, escape, escapism for us. That's you right. Know, we, we watch it. We, you know, we can, you, you can take me away for six hours on a Sunday. Right. I'm all in, dude. I'm all in. Right. And right. So, so I think that is the issue that fans are having. And I'm talking about a lot of fans. There's a few fans out there. Right. But right. I think in the overall, as a fan of Rashawn McDonald, I'm a fan for life. I'm a fan who believes I'm an African-American fan who also understands what they're trying to do. Uh, sometimes it's confusing because each one has a different way of showing their role of protest. I think that mm-hmm. that kind of damages the uh, format of bringing awareness because one person is doing this way, one person is doing this way. But I know that it's something that is needed. Uh, when you have the most popular uh, viewed or format on television, why not use it? And I commend That's them right. for doing that. That's uh, right. I want to move over to uh, the concussions. Mm-hmm. That has been uh, a dominant part. That's another level of crisis management that you have to deal with. Tell us mm-hmm. the issues that, 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 that are still brewing with concussions in the NFL and how you guys are dealing with it. You know, football is a very physical sport. Yes, sir. Um, and it's a very uh, fast pace with play by a lot of strong, fast human beings. And uh, things happen. Uh, the only positive I can say mm-hmm. is that they have equipment on them versus anything with soccer where guys are bumping into each other or using the head and hit the ball or any other sport. Guys falling on the hardwood and basketball and running in the elbows right. and picks. Mm-hmm. You know, but in in football, we have a protocol. Uh, A few years ago, we sat down with the National Football League and set up a a set of rules and and regulations in terms of how to manage a potential concussion whereby a player has to come out of the game, go under the blue tent, as you guys have seen on the sideline, and go through through a series of tests Mm -hmm. in order to determine what level of concussion there is. And if there's any sign of concussion, Mm -hmm. he definitely does not go back in the game. So it could be a slight, but even if it's a slight concussion, um, they don't go back in the game. So we're trying to set the standard Mm -hmm. so it could trickle down to our colleges and our high school and our youth leagues because, you know, people look at the National Football League as, oh, my God, these, you know, these hits are very dangerous and it's causing guys to have a concussion. But you remember, I mean, um, these hits and and these sort of collisions occur early on. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get – the high schools and the youth leagues, which I think USA Football organization um, that we helped start uh, several years ago, are educating um, these men. So we just don't have um, these these uh, you know runaway coaches that come out from work and and just you know 
infuse their frustration on little eight and nine year olds and say, hey, hit each other in the head until I say stop. You know, those things need to stop. We need to stop having your right. everyday coach come out there and, and implement bad tools, bad techniques. And <laughs> I would really, tell you some call. Every time a good play, they hit each other side of the head. So right. they, I'll be going like, okay, now, now can we just stop that? The, the, right. head, the helmet slap for a good play. Right, right. Or well, a bunch of them jump too, on top right. of them and just, you know, it might sound silly, but that is an issue with your head, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, it, it is another knock upside the head, but <laughs> one of the things we, we put in there, use them more, leveraging your shoulder pads, using yes, your sir. arms yes, more, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and then your targets. We're trying to manage the targets because I think for a while people got excited of knockout plays, but Ooh, yes. the knockout plays were having some impact, but they used to sell the knockout plays. Absolutely. And, and so we, we try to change the format, and I think we're getting better. Uh, sometimes it's causing a little confusion with the defender because their defender sees they know what how to hit? How to hit? He, he, he's he's running up on a guy like Rob Gronkowski and saying to myself, "Wait a minute, he's making a business decision there because you know here's a guy six 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 seven, two hundred eighty five pounds, and now I got to figure out how to bring this guy down, which is not easy." <laughs> now, <laughs> so, let, me, let me ask you this: what, what role do you guys play in the in the world's biggest draft, the NFL draft? What role does the Players Association pay play during the NFL draft, which well, will be happening in April this year? Yeah, one of the things we do is we really have a program, we kind of initiation program, bringing them into the fold of the family. Uh, programs, education, let them know our role, uh, where they can uh, become a part of it, and mm-hmm. early you start, the better. Mm-hmm. And so we tell them about all our initiatives, all our programs we have available, and uh, try to get their parents involved. So not just them, them and the parents involved, because we know it's going to be a transition for these young guys to get acclimated to being a professional athlete. And so we just try to let them know about our resource. Let them know we're all going to be there for them and we'll be there for them throughout their career. And once they finish playing, we'll, we'll be there for them. Man, this is amazing. Uh, you know, my whole thing about the NFL, uh, talking to you, is that I just want people to just see another side, the business side yep. of it. Thank and, you. And basically, you know, you have these incredible athletes who need to be protected. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also a brand called the NFL that needs to be protected too. And sometimes you have two sides that don't even communicate, and that's your job, to get people to communicate and be that's one right. giant team. That's right. And you, you're winning, my man. And, uh, again, you know, if you ever need any branding, you know where to come. I'll be ready to tell them players about their brand to stay off that social media to keep it right and keep that marketing straight because they can win, man. You have a great product. You're a great person. You know I appreciate and respect the NFL just as a business model. And these young men have to take advantage of it because it's such a short career uh, performance level. But a lot of money is thrown their way and they can retain that money and live a great life. Like you said, it's what they do away from the game. Yes, more sir. so than what they do on the field. Carl, thank, thank you, man. Can I can I invite you back on the show, oh, man? Oh, man. Hey, look, I'll come back in the next hour if you want me to. Hey, man. my brother, my fun. brother. Go, go. That's my love, man. Put the word out there about money-making conversation, man. Keep winning, you know brother. I, I appreciate you.